Hey guys, it's me, Nate, again. Today I'm going to be showing you a gyro sensor program I made over the weekend. I got a lot of comments on my video saying, how do you guys use the gyro sensor to turn accurately? Or how can I use the gyro sensor to turn accurately? Well, I had, um, you know, made up a program and I'm going to be showing you guys that today. So then you guys can, um, you know, use it on your robots and that way you can get some accurate gyro sensor turning on your robots. Um, remember, at 100 subscribers, we're going to be doing a giveaway, so if you like the content, please subscribe to my channel and you'll be entered. Um, and also, if you have any ideas for future content that I can have on my, uh, my channel for FLL videos, then please comment in the comment section below. I'll see if I can do a video to help you guys out. Alright, let's get started with programming. Guys, so I have this program here for you guys for the gyro sensor, um, but it looks very confusing at first. Um, but what I did is I actually put some notes in here you, so you guys can read them and then also kind of follow along. It might, it might give some examples on, you know, uh, some things that I don't mention. Uh, and so you guys might be able to visualize this a little bit better. Uh, feel free to read the notes if you want to. And then um, I will be going over block by block on how to get this working. Uh, one second. Let me detach this. Because this is for the my block, so you don't actually need this in your actual program. But let me um, let me show you guys one second. So, okay, let's start with um, we'll do this in chunks. So let's start with these three blocks first. So let's talk about what they do. One, reset your gyro. So why do we reset the gyro sensor? It's because um, you always want to have a reading of zero when you're turning. That way you know where the gyro sensor is before you turn. And that way you kind of have a starting point for the gyro sensor. You know it's always going to be at zero, starting from zero, and then you can work from there. So um, this weight block is really just to give it time to reset. Um, one second is way too long for the, you know, you would be sitting on the field wasting a lot of time if you actually had it set to one second. So you could actually even go down to like 0.05 seconds um, for the weight block. This is a variable block. So I have a video on variable blocks and how they can help you uh, on my channel. But um, just basically a crash course is that the variable block stores a value and then you can then read that value later in the program. So I'll be talking about that a little bit. So um, this is going to be, look, I named our variable block turn angle. The reason is because this is going to be the angle we want to turn our robot. So, you know, 90 degrees or say 45 degrees, oops, sorry about that, or say 45 degrees, whatever. So let's say 90 degrees because that's what most of the notes are set to. So what we do is we then, um, to do the variable block, all you do is drag it out here, you go into right and then numeric, okay? So, and then you would type in, like I said, you know, you have to actually add a variable. So you click add variable, type in what you want it to be named, and then that's it. Um, you know, like I said, I named mine turn angle. So, what you want to do next is you place a loop, okay? Loop is in this orange section right here, and it's this right here. So you place a loop, okay? Um, so we'll just leave it at that for now. Inside the loop, what do you place? So, uh, the first thing you want to do is place a read a variable block. So, uh, this, the only thing that's different from these two variables is this is write and this is read. As you can see, this has a pencil mark and this has a book. So, um, you write the value that you want here and then this will actually read that value. So, we are going to say, so this is reading 90 right now. Okay, you have to make sure you go into here and do the read numeric. You have to, and then you also have to make sure it's on the right variable. So it is, it's on the turn angle. So, this is reading a value of 90. We are going to then add a math block and then add a switch. So let's talk about what these two do, the math block and the switch. So, math block is in the red section. It is right here, math. And you want to put it on subtraction. So subtract. And uh, the switch, you want to change in, in your settings to the gyro sensor. And then you want to go to compare angle and set that. So let's talk about what this is. So these three blocks and how they work together. So this will read your value of 90. Okay, you guys can understand that. It's pretty easy to understand. So then, um, from there, you take 90 and you subtract a value in the math block. And then you get a new reading. So in this case, what we are going to be doing is 90 minus 10, which is going to give you 80. And that is what you are going to be plugging into your switch. So, um, as your threshold into your switch. So why do, what, what's 80 have to do with anything? Um, 80 is going to be the threshold of our PID loop. So basically the PID loop, how it works, like I said, you start turning very fast 
and then as you approach your 90 degree angle, it actually slows down so you don't shoot over the 90 degrees. However, um, it kind of works by like reducing your power by like say half or even a quarter of your power, etc. And then maybe like an eighth of your power as you get closer, a sixteenth of your power. However, um, as you get closer to 90 degrees, it's going to reduce your power drastically. So like you might be running, maybe you're only one degree away, so you're at 89 degrees. And at that point, your power is so little that it, your robot actually won't turn because your power is not even high enough to turn. So it might be like 0 0.0 or 0 0.5. Uh, percent power on your motors. So that obviously won't work because your power is so little your robot can't turn that last degree it needs to. So that's a problem and that's what this switch is here for. Basically what you're saying is use that PID loop uh, all the way up until 80 degrees. At that point, you know, at 80 degrees your robot still, uh, the PID loop is still uh, high enough power to turn your robot and then it's saying after 80 degrees just do a constant rate of uh, 4% power turn and negative 4% power turn. Um, so after after 80 degrees, after your gyro sensor reaches 80 degrees, it's going to switch this side of the program on and then just turn it at a constant rate of this speed. And that's slow enough to where uh, your robot will still turn. It, it has enough power to turn your robot, but it's also not fa too fast to where it overshoots the threshold. So that's, um, that's a way to save time. And also it, it works really, really well. So like I said, basically, you read 90, you then uh, do 90 minus 10. Um, 10 is going to provide your threshold, like I said, which it equals 80. Then it's going to say use a PID loop all the way up until 80. So activate this program all the way up until 80 degrees. After 80 degrees, shut this program off up here, and then now turn this bottom section on and just do a constant uh, turn, you know, just for that last 10 degrees. The, the, re, uh, the constant turn really doesn't mess with your time all that much because it's only 10 degree turn. It's such a little amount to turn that like turning at a constant rate of a slow speed really won't add that much time. So let's talk about here. This is really your PID loop working and how you know your PID loop actually makes your motor's uh, speed reduce as you approach that threshold. So let's talk about that. So uh, the first thing, we're going to just talk about all the blocks and their names and then we'll go into what they do. So this is going to be a measure gyro block. So that is located in the yellow section. If you drag it out, I'll just show you real quick. You click that and then you click reset. Oh wait, nope, sorry about that, not reset. We're measuring, like I said, sorry. So it's a, me uh, you go into your gyro. Oh, hold on. Just delete that, I clicked the wrong block. Um, so you go into your gyro, measure, angle. That's what we need right now. And then make sure it's on the right port, so port four in our case. So that's that block. The next one is it the same thing, read the variable again. So you're now reading the value of 90 again. And then you're gonna plug it into a math equation. From this math equation, you're going to take the value of the subtraction and then plug it into a division, and then you're going to multiply it. So it's a lot of math, but it really is not as complicated as it looks. It's really simple when I talk about it a little bit more. So for this example, let us, let's just say, um, we're going to say that, okay, um, actually, let, let's just uh, talk about what it would do in this case, uh, because that's, that's pretty simple. So we are going to measure the gyro sensor. If I zoom out on my program, like such, the robot all the way up until this point has not moved. So you can see that all of this, the robot does not move. The only time the robot moves is this drive block and this drive block. So the robot, all of this is just kind of pre-set up to your, your uh, PID loop turn. Um, it really doesn't take like any time. So even though it's a lot of blocks, it doesn't really use any time. It's just more setting up your gyro sensor. So uh, let's go back and we'll talk about this gyro sensor right here. So, uh, the, the first thing you wanna do in your PID loop is measure your gyro sensor. So obviously, you just reset your gyro sensor, it's gonna read a value of zero. So that's why you set it, to zero. that's why you reset it because this is always going to read a value of zero in the beginning. So, what we do here is, um, let's talk about this and then we'll go to this because this is actually, sub so both of these are actually subtracted. So this is 90, okay, it's plugged into the subtraction block. So 90, minus a value. So let's see. In this case, it's zero because this is going to be putting out a zero. So 90 minus zero, so 90 minus zero is going to equal 90, right? So obviously, we don't want to turn 90% power because that's way too fast. So 
We then take the 90 and we divide it by 2. That is going to give us 40% or 45% power on our drive motors. Um, that, you know, 45 was a pretty good place to start because it's still really fast. So, you turn, so you can see that I plug in the value of 45 into the drive motor. Now, the problem is, if you turn them, both of these drive motors, 45, your robot's just going to drive straight. It's not going to turn. So you need one to be 45 and one to be negative 45. So to do that, we take one and plug it, uh, we take 45 and plug it into one of the drive motors. For the other drive motor, we take 45, we plug it into a multiplication of negative one. That way, it'll make it negative 45. Then, we take the negative 45, plug it into the other drive motor. So that will make it, so this one, has 45% uh, percent power, and then the other one goes through a negative one multiplication, and it will give it negative 45% power. So that's how your that's the speed your robot's going to start at. So let me show you. Um, let me let me talk about what happens like midway through. So you'll see you see the speed right now is 45% power and negative 45% power. So let's say we've already turned say 50 degrees, and we only have 40 degrees more. Let me see, let's see what our speed would be then, because like I said, it slows down. So let's see, um, at this point, like I said, we turned 50 degrees already, so we'll, we'll assume 50 degrees. So we have measured 50 degrees from our driver sensor. We plugged into the equation again. We do 90 minus 50. That is going to give us 40, okay, right here. So we have a value of 40 in the equals. We then take the value of 40. We plug the value of 40 into a division of 2. That will give us a value of 20. From there, we take the 20, we plug it into the, you know, this, and we do the same thing, 20 and negative 20. So you can see, halfway through the turn, basically, so we turn 50 degrees of the 90, we already reduce the power by about half. So you can see how that works, and you can see how the updates actually work. Now, you know, if you were to do, say, you turn 70 degrees at this point, then it's the same thing. It's already slowed down pretty fast. So... Um, after 80 degrees, you just do this constant rate of 4% power and negative 4% power. And that will actually, um, you know, give you a, a constant rate in the, the last little bit of your turn. That way, you know, you don't accidentally overshoot and the PID loop doesn't stop the robot either. So that's, that's good to have there. So this last little bit, this is actually critical to the program. All of these blocks are very critical, otherwise your program will not work. So we, re we now are outside of the switch. So now we're going to work on interrupting the loop, so stopping the turn. That's what these blocks are. It's interrupting the loop. So this one actually interrupts the loop, but then we have to actually use a little bit of uh, math to get that, and I'll explain why. So we read our value again, the turn angle. So once again, 90 degrees. We plug it into a subtraction of 1, and then we get 89, and that will interrupt our loop. When we're at 89 degrees, we will stop turning. Now, why did I interrupt it at 89 when we want to turn 90 degrees? Well, because at least with our robot, I'm not sure if it's the same case with you, you guys. You can actually uh, comment below if it is the same case. But with our robot, when I would type in 90 degrees, it would actually always give me a value of 91. It would turn 91 degrees. It was actually very consistent. It always landed at 91 degrees. So all I did was add this little bit of math and um, basically subtracted our turn, val or our turn value, so 90 degrees minus 1, and gave it 89. That way the loop will, um, will, only, will be interrupted at 89, and then it will actually stop at 90. So um, it actually does work very, very consistently. I, got, uh, about t I did it about 10 times, and every time it stopped at 90 degrees. So um, let's just, you know, uh, I'll, I'll give you guys some, you know, some views on these uh, notes that I got here. So you guys can read those a little bit. So you can pause the video if you would like these notes. But let me just give it so you guys can read them. And then also what I want to talk to you guys about is that this program you might have to tune a little bit to your robot. So this is a very good idea. Um, if you guys need some more help of me explaining it to you, please comment in my video and I'll be able to explain it to you guys a little better. But this is really, this works really well. You then can um, highlight this program, so you would do this and then go around the entire program. And then you go into tools and you can click my block builder and you can actually build a my block that way, um, rather than have to make this program every time you want to turn your robot, because that's a bit ridiculous, you can literally just have this little gyro block in your, in your my block section. That way, you know, like if you want to drive forward and turn 90 degrees, say, you know, drive forward two rotations and then turn 90 degrees, all you have is, is this little block. And then you can type in 90 degrees, and it's that simple. And then if you want to then drive forward again, oops, 
try for it again and turn it up for say 45 degrees then you can just do that and type in 45 and it's really simple to do um, so yeah I can actually show you my robot um, doing this my, my team's robot with this alright let me uh, let me show you guys the robot alright guys here's the robot we're gonna be using um, just for the demonstration so let me run the program so you guys can see it so you can see that it turned a uh, exactly 90 degrees. It's hard to see from the video, but let me show you on the ports. So it is 90 degrees. You want me to turn it again, and I'll show you guys here. 90 degrees exactly. So it works really well. The program works really well. One more time. All right. Well, I hope I was able to help your team use the FLL gyro sensor a little bit more accurately. Um, remember to subscribe to my channel if you like the content I'm sharing. And then also, uh, please comment in the section below if you have any questions about the coding. I'll do my best to answer any of those questions for you guys. All right, see you guys next time.